there, I'm Shama Maher, CEO of Scaling Retail. And boy, what a year has it been for all of us here in the industry. So many things have shifted and changed as we went through the pandemic, most certainly how we look at our global supply chain and how we manage the entire process of brand building, selling and manufacturing. Honestly, guys, it has been an incredible five years mostly because as we've seen kind of the shift and rise of different sorts of trade policies, changes to NAFTA, looking at trade wars with China, supply chain management has not been an easy thing for anyone in the industry. But little did we know until COVID happened, what a dramatic shift and change it would be for every single brand out there to have entire countries shut down from a manufacturing standpoint. Now, currently as we speak, India is going through one of the most terrible crises in terms of obviously COVID and recovering from that. And in addition to that, it is severely affecting the entire manufacturing process. What is that meaning? It means that brands are not receiving their products in time. It means that some brands are pushing back their launches. In fact, guys, it's pretty terrible news. It's not just happening in India. It has happened in a num number of different countries around the world as we've moved through these last 12 months of this global pandemic. So what is a brand to do? Not only how do you manage supply chain today, but how are you going to be managing the future of your supply chain? How well are you going to need to protect your supply chain assets and be agile and nimble so that you do not find yourself in the similar situation as maybe you have in the recent 12 months or even in the last five years. So let's talk a little bit about what to do in today's market. Now, the fantastic thing about today's market is these sorts of significant shifts are happening to so many brands. It might be reassuring or somewhat anxiety producing to recognize that you're not alone. You're not alone because every other retailer out there that's placed an order or every other direct to consumer brand out there that's looking to wait for their deliveries, who's been producing in one of these hotspot areas is certainly suffering at the same rate. So guess what? Consumers also realize that this is happening as well. We no longer live in a disjointed communication world where consumers have no idea what's happening. In fact, guys, COVID has said such a global impact that everyone from the consumer to the manufacturers to all the sales teams all the retail outlets everyone's been in the same position so from a leveling out the playing field standpoint i think everyone's going to be okay but what does that mean in terms of how we recover how might we be able to deal with these sorts of situations as they might happen over time now, I'm not one to say we're going to have another global pandemic. In fact, I hope we don't. But when it comes to how we look at trade policy and how it looks when we think about tariffs and customs and duties, depending on where global politics lends us, we might find ourselves shifting manufacturing in our supply chain more frequently than we did in the past. We are quite simply living in a more politically unstable world that's also now driven by certain kinds of global natural disasters that we're going to have to mitigate and stay agile with. So I know that sounds kind of shitty. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but let's kind of figure out how the hell do we recover and plan for that. So the first thing, we need to be agile. We need to start to take a look at where can we actually access global manufacturing? Where can we access global logistics, global 3PLs in a way that's going to service our customer the best? And that requires a bit of research, right? It's not simply going after the first or second place that you found. It's quite simply taking the time to research all of your other options, having those conversations, looking at those proposals, and actually when it comes to manufacturing, paying to get samples made, right? You actually want to start to engage with factories that you can actually find out, are they gonna be able to produce that garment if I need it to over time? So that means warming up your bench, right? You need to have a bench of players that are ready to substitute other players if something happens domestically within that country of manufacturing, production, warehousing, shipping, etc. So first step, stacking up your bench. Very, very important. The next thing to do is to really start to consider what areas of your supply chain might just categorically need to be shifted. What's going on in terms of, you know, how labor and cost of goods are now stacking up to places where you might be distributing versus your need to push product out to market. 
you might find yourself starting to cherry pick a more global distributive process rather than centralizing your production into one region. Now, certainly that's only possible if you have the minimum order quantity to do so, but it is not uncommon to see brands out there that are producing some garments in Turkey, some garments in Portugal, some garments in India, some in Vietnam, and certainly some in the United States. That I think is a really easy way of being able to diversify manufacturing and production so you always have access right, to those producers who can jump in to take over even if their core competencies might be in a different category. Maybe one factory is better at wovens, one's better at knits. However, if there's a downturn and all of a sudden something happens, you're unable to produce that part of your collection, you will have other parts of your collection that are ready to go live, right? Other parts that are ready to get produced to go in with that slotted delivery time. The other thing you might be able to consider is stacking up who else can be producing knits for you all over the world? Who else can be producing woven? Once you've had those conversations and you start to understand how your brand can be more globally distributed, you might also be asking yourself, well, do I just simply want to produce products in my domestic country? So if you are in the UK, do you want to be producing in the UK? If you're in France, do you want to be producing in France? Or from the US, do I want to be producing within the US? Now, United States, looking at the labor market, looking at the opportunities to produce domestically, I think is an important component, right? It's one of those things where you have to look at cost-benefit analysis. Here in California, where I'm located, minimum wages are increasing, which is fantastic. We're now seeing it go from you know, 12 to 13 to 14 to $15. I think that's great. However, what does that mean in terms of cost of goods? Now, all of a sudden, your cost of goods is increasing on your product. When your cost of goods increases, you're going to have to look to see how your overall pricing strategy is going to be shifting over time. You could certainly do some cost benefit analysis and say, well, is it better for me to produce domestically at this rate of cost of goods, or is it going to be better for me to actually produce internationally with that cost of goods, given the risk and given the benefits between the both? So you may want to start to have that conversation with yourself over time, especially as you're looking to build out future price points and future collection development. But as we're looking, guys, in terms of the specifics, in terms of U.S. manufacturing, I'll tell you the following. There are more U.S. manufacturers on a small scale that are popping up, which is great. The U.S. is now able to design, develop, and produce really great garments, specifically not just in the Midwest where so many new factories are popping up, but the areas of Los Angeles County are definitely also popping up in terms of manufacturing, and we're seeing somewhat of a revitalization. You might also be hearing about some manufacturers out in New York. Fantastic. I love the idea of working domestically. At the same time, right, as you're considering that, some of the other benefits are obviously low minimum order quantities, the ability to oversee your supply chain, the ability to be close and to really approach your product like a craftsperson, right? You're approaching it from that level of attention and detail. That is all good and well if your brand is based on the provenance of these kinds of qualities. If your brand is based on craftsmanship, if your brand is based on being local, if it is based on appealing to a customer that really gives a shit about those qualities. If your customer doesn't care, then you're gonna be absorbing a higher cost of goods over time with very, very little ability to impact your overall retail price because the customer give a shit factor isn't quite there yet, right? So very important to understand how your manufacturing really plays into your brand messaging and if that is something that you need to consider. Now, whether or not you like it or not, you are in the business of supply chain management. Why is that? You are in the business of procuring, of sourcing, of taking it from sourcing of materials, working with the mills in some cases, taking it all the way through manufacturing and production, moving it to the 3PL, to the third party logistics or warehouse, distributing it, getting it to the customer, and then reverse logistics, getting it back from the customer when they have to return and exchange it, getting it back to the distribution center, and basically moving up and down all of these different systems. So pulling together the systems is important. Revisiting those contracts are important. Looking at where, in fact, your customer base might be growing. Perhaps you're based in the US, you have a huge US market here, and maybe you're starting to notice that people in Paris are buying your product. Maybe that tells you you might need a European distribution center, right? These are very important things to notice because as we scale, 
and we look to the future of global supply chain management, we are going to find that more and more companies on the side of logistics and manufacturing are going to be working together to collaborate to make a more cohesive global economic way to create a more cohesive global footprint in terms of shipping, receiving, manufacturing, and design and development. And ultimately the future of that lies in partnership planning, reassessing your attributes, reassessing your agreements, and being able to stay agile and nimble. All right, guys, that's all for me for today. Please feel free to send us an email at hello at scalingretail.com to discuss your global supply chain management and how, in fact, you might be able to scale up operations in a way that's going to help you future-proof your business and future-proof your profitability. Talk to you soon. Bye.